Okay, so I finally found it. I found the perfect effect to show off Framer Motion's drag API. On Myriad.video's website, they have these stacked content card sections where you can like drag and reorder cards. You can throw them around the screen with velocity, all kinds of cool stuff. And this is an effect that is extremely simple with Framer Motion. Source code and everything in the description. Let's check out how it works. So let's start by just getting the boring stuff out of the way early. We really just need something on the page that we can start stacking cards on top of and dragging stuff around. I have this main section element right here, just this one component. Obviously I already have Framer Motion installed and I'm also gonna be using a package called Tailwind Merge. Don't worry, we'll cover that when we get to it. But to start styling this up on the class names of my section, using Tailwind CSS in this case, of course use normal CSS if you want, I'm going to add a position of relative, a display of grid, a min height of screen, and a width of screen just to make this obviously take up the full screen. I'll place all the content in the center of the screen. I'll give this an overflow of hidden. So if any cards get dragged outside of the screen, they won't actually you know, cause any weird scroll bar issues. And then finally, I'm just gonna give it a dark background color like this. Inside of our section, we just need some kind of content. I'm just gonna add an H2 tag. To that, I'm going to give it a position of relative, a Z index of zero, so it sits behind all of our cards. And I want this to take up a bunch of space. So on small screens, I'm gonna give it a text size of 20 viewport width, a font weight of of 900, a text color of this neutral 800 color, which is this color right here. And then starting on medium screens or above 768 pixels, I'll set a font size of 200 pixels. And then finally, I'll just add some content inside of that. And now we should see some stuff starting to show up here. And that really is a good enough start here. So now we can start adding our cards down below my drag cards component right here. I'll create a new component called cards. This component can just return a div. And this div is just going to fill the size of this section. Remember that this has a position of relative on it. So we're going to need to give this div a position of absolute, an inset of zero, and a Z index of 10 so that it sits on top of this content here. And then we can, of course, actually add this in. We'll just add it right under our H2. And to see that something's rendering, I can just type in some text and we should be able to see that up here in the corner. Now, just to get the most basic possible example, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the content that we have right here. And we'll create one more component down here, which I'm gonna call card. Card also right now can just return some kind of div element or something. So we'll say, return div like this. And this will just give some basic styles to start. So I'll say like size 56 or something, and then maybe some backgrounds. We could say like BG white. And then of course, we just need to drop that into our cards component up here. Just add one, we'll say card. And there we go. Now we have an element up here. Now, if we wanna make this draggable, it's actually very, very simple. So I'm gonna come up to the top up here and I'm gonna import motion from Framer Motion. So we'll say import motion from Framer Motion. And all that we have to do is back down here on our card div, which we wanna make draggable. We'll say motion dot div like this. So now we should see that both of these are motion divs. And this is going to give us access to all kinds of different props for defining how we want our drag to behave essentially. Now, the simplest way to just start making something draggable is just to add the drag prop. So this can take multiple different values. So if I set equal to and go like this, you can either make it draggable on just the X or Y axis, or this can optionally take a Boolean. So I could say true, and that will work in both the X and Y axis. Or of course I can just shorthand it and just say drag like this. And now I should be able to drag my element around. And by default, we already have this kind of throwable behavior here. Now there is a little bit of a problem with this because this doesn't have any constraints right now, right? Like I can throw this and now it's off the screen and it's gone forever. There's no way to actually get that back. So we do wanna fix that. Now, the way that we fix this is by adding constraints to where we can actually drag this element. So if I add a new line right here and start typing in drag again, we'll see all of my different options for defining how my drag should work. And the one specifically we want is drag constraints. Now, there are two different ways that you can actually define your drag constraints. So optionally, I can add things like top, left, bottom, and right constraints. So I could say you can drag it top so many pixels. So for instance, now I've said you can drag it to the top minus 90 pixels or to the left minus 90 pixels. So we'll see if I try and drag it up here. It'll let me go a little ways, but not all the ways but I have no constraints whenever I try and drag it in other directions. But this also is not exactly what we want. Realistically, what we want is this to be able to be drug anywhere inside of this wrapping div, right? So we're gonna have a whole bunch of these different cards that are gonna be added in here like this. All of these should be able to be dragged anywhere within the confines of this div. And fortunately, we can do that, right? So with drag constraints right here, if I hover over this, you can either do it the way that we're doing it right now, 
or this can optionally take a reference to whatever element you want to actually add the constraints to. So if we look down here at their example, they just have a container ref like this, and then they're passing that ref to the drag constraints right here, which is exactly what we are going to do. So right up here in my cards component, I'll say container ref is equal to use ref. Make sure that you've actually imported this from React. I'm using TypeScript, so I need to make sure that I define this correctly. And then obviously we'll default this to null. And finally, we can set this to our ref right here. Now I don't actually want all three of these right now. We'll just keep this as one and we'll pass this ref in as a prop to our card. Actually, I'm going to call this container ref. We can then destructure this prop down here in our card and we need to add our TypeScript types if we're using TypeScript. So if you're following along and you are using TypeScript, that's just going to look something like this. And then finally, we just take our ref right here and we pass that into our drag constraints of our div. And now if we start to try and drag this around, it should be constrained entirely by the wrapping kind of container here, right? So I can come all the way down to the bottom left. I can go all the way up to the top right. Obviously, this reference can be to anything that is wrapping around this element. So if you had a whole bunch of different stuff, this could be the entire page. This could be whatever you wanted it to be. And it would keep all of your drag elements contained within that that wrapping element. And this realistically is the entire basis of this effect. I guess you will have actually seen that there are a couple of other things you can do here. So if you type in drag, you can start looking through all of the different options you have here. So by example, if you wanna change the kind of elasticity, you can say drag elastic, and this will take a value from zero to one. I think it defaults as 0.5. But if I bump this all the way up to say, 0.95. It's going to be a lot more elastic. It's going to follow your mouse around a lot more, especially over here at the edges. When you kind of try and drag it off the edge, it's going to go way off the side. You could also bump that all the way down to say 0.15. And now it's going to be a lot less elastic on the edges here. Maybe we can go with something like 0.65. And you can also even do things like removing this velocity that you have or this momentum that you have when you try and throw elements around just by coming and adding a prop called drag momentum. And now whenever I try and throw my cards, doesn't work anymore. They just kind of stop. Now, I don't want that effect, so I'm gonna comment that out. And now we can actually start thinking about styling up these cards. So for my example, I'm just gonna use images. Obviously, you can expand this to all different kinds of cards, all different kinds of elements, but just to keep it simple, because this is the base effect, we're just gonna style this up, kind of like those printout images on the original example. And to start, I'm just gonna take my div right here, and I'm actually gonna turn this into an image instead. Now, I'm just getting image URLs from unsplash.com. If you haven't used Unsplash before, I'll make sure I leave a link in the description for that. It's just a website with a whole bunch of free images that you can use. But just to kind of show what I'm talking about, obviously, this actually needs to be an image. You can then set the source to, let's say, this image that I copy pasted. We can make sure we add some kind of alt here. And we can kind of just style this up as we see fit. So we'll say class name. Oh, actually, sorry, we have one down here already. We can remove our size right here. We'll just let the image kind of figure that out on its own. Or at least maybe we'll just set the width instead. So let's say width 48 by default. I'm going to go with a slightly more off-white background. So say neutral 200. And this is going to show up because we're going to actually add some padding around our image. So we'll say padding one and then padding on the bottom, I'll say four. So for those of you non-Tailwind people, this is four pixels around the edges and then 16 pixels on the bottom. And if I save that, we'll now see we have something that looks kind of like, like, a, like a Polaroid image. Now, one thing I additionally want to be able to do with this is I want to be able to position them wherever I want, kind of scattered around the middle of the screen. And I want you to be able to actually pass those values in as props to this card. And there are a number of different things that I actually want to be able to pass in. I'm just going to kind of drop these in, then I'll explain what I'm going for. So if I come up to my props up here, I'll just paste these in. So obviously I wanna be able to change the source and the alt attributes just for my image for whichever one of these cards that I'm rendering. And then I also wanna be able to set this position to absolute down here and then define the top and left depending on you know whichever image I'm loading at the time. I wanna be able to rotate each of them independently so they kind of look like they're scattered about. And then optionally, I can just pass in whatever class names that I want. And this is gonna let us do things like just change the size or whatever else we may wanna optionally change for each of our cards. Now I mentioned earlier a package just really quick, which is called TW Merge or Tailwind Merge rather. So back up here at the top, I'm going to import TW Merge from Tailwind Merge. So if you've never used this before, make sure that this is installed. And what this is gonna let us do is actually kind of concatenate our classes here. So if I kind of remove my class names here, I can now say TW Merge. And now TW Merge is gonna work as I'll paste my normal base class names back in right here and then pass in my class name. Oh, I didn't actually add it yet. So up here, we'll destructure class name and we'll just pass in class name. And what this will let us do is, you know, say our class name also has 
has a width attribute here. It'll make sure that that's actually being overridden by whatever is being passed in and not kind of trying to fight with the default styles that are right here. So by example, now I can come back up to my card up here and add whatever class names I want. So say class name, and I could say width, you know, 72 or something. And this is now gonna get bigger and it's gonna actually use the width that I'm passing in here as opposed to the width right here. Really quickly, we can change our source and our alt attributes to use the ones that are being passed in. So we can say source like this. And same with our alt. We of course need to make sure that we actually pass those into our card up here. And our top left and rotate values, we're just gonna drop directly into the style tag of our image. So making sure that we destructure all of those. We've got our top left and rotate like this. And these can just be dropped, like I said, into our style prop like so, and then we can just define those as essentially whatever we want. Really quick though, I do need to remember to come down to my base class names and add a position of absolute. And then back up here, just make sure that we're adding these props in. So I'm gonna rotate this first one six degrees and then say 20% top, 25% left. And if I refresh my page now, we should see that the default position is kind of over here towards the middle now. Obviously everything else still works. I can still drag this around, but now we're gonna be able to position each of these elements independently wherever we want on the screen. Obviously this is gonna just trial and error depending on your exact version. For instance, for this image for me, I'm gonna change the size of this from the default size. I'm gonna remove my class name up here where I have the width 72. And what I'm gonna say is that on smaller screens, I want a width of 36 or 144 pixels. And then starting on medium screens, I'll bump that up to 224 pixels. So that'll give me something about like this, which should then get smaller on smaller screens like that. And really we can just kind of drop as many of these elements in as we want. So, you know, for instance, maybe we want five or 10 different images. I've got a whole bunch of my own that I've already kind of written up that I'm just gonna drop in here, but all of them really kind of follow the same format, right? So for this next one, source and alt, a different rotate value, different top and left, different size, so on and so forth, all the way down for all of these five or six different cards. And if I save that, we should now see that all of our elements are appearing on the screen. All of them are draggable, looking really good. Now, one thing I additionally wanna do that I think is kind of just a good user experience if you're using this exact same effect is that anytime I click on one of these elements, I would like to bring it to the front of the page. So I would like to kind of bump the Z index up so that it's the first image, right? Like if I try and, try and click on this image in the back, I want it to actually show in front of this image right here. And the way that we're gonna do that is pretty straightforward as well. So I'm gonna come back down here to my card component. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna define my Z index based on a piece of state. Make sure that we're actually importing use state here. And reason being, we're gonna wanna update the Z index anytime that we actually click and move one of these elements. So I'll take my Z index and I'll pass it into my style prop right here. By default, obviously all of these are still zero. So we need to be able to update these. And the way that we're gonna do that is using a function that's going to trigger on mouse down. I am going to call my version of this function, just update Z index. We can come up and define that function right up here. And what essentially this function is gonna do is it's gonna grab every version of these images. It's going to figure out what the max Z index is of all of those. And then it's just gonna increase this Z index to be the largest of those values or one greater than the largest of those values rather. And we're just gonna do that with some pretty basic JavaScript. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a class to my class names down here that I'm just gonna call drag elements. Really, you can call this whatever you want. You just gotta be able to hook into it up here oops, in your Z index update function. That way you can actually fetch all of these just using something like a document.query selector. So I'll just grab all of my drag elements, document.query selector all. We'll define an initial max Z index. You can just set this to negative infinity or I guess zero would also be sufficient. And then we'll map over each of those with L's dot for each. And then for each of our element, we'll go ahead and grab the Z index of it. We can then actually check to see if that's the largest Z index that we've come across so far. So, so long as this actually has a Z index set on it. And and the current Z index of the element that we're mapping over is larger than whatever this Z index is. We can update that value. And then finally, after all of that, we'll just update our Z index to be whatever the maximum is plus one, right? So by default, the max is just gonna be zero. So whenever we click on something, we want the new Z index to be one. Maybe the max is, you know, a thousand, then we want the next max to be a thousand and one. And I just realized I broke everything. What did I do? I think I accidentally, oh yeah, absolute placeholder. Oops, remove that. Don't know what happened there, but there we go. Cool, so now if I come to my back most element right here and click on it, we should see that bumps up to the front. You can still drag everything around, so on and so forth, kind of throw stuff around. And that is our effect. 
Of course, you can go, you know, way further with this. You can add a whole bunch of new cards, like I mentioned, different types of cards. You can play around with the different drag effects. You can make completely new effects just using these same kind of ideas. Anyways, that's going to be it today for me, guys. Source code and everything else in the description, like I mentioned. If you got anything out of this, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe. Beyond that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.